Mandalorian, the maximum effort, and the Ray Doomzilla, the trilogy of terror is back again. You guys ready? Let's do it. Show those guns, Hondo. Show those guns. See, now you can do it, right? <laughs> you do, it for the, do, do it for the do it for the show. Do it for the show. <laughs> Come on, Hondo. Come on, show the guns. Embarrassing me, guys. Show the guns. Flex, flex Mentalo. It's like OnlyFans. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's, more, it's more lonely fans, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a... Von Hondo. Yo. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. To the SF Company Hour, number 174 on the SF Comic wow. Company uh, YouTube channel. <coughs> uh, 170, almost 175, bro. bro. This, uh, I think we just, uh, I think our third an- third or fourth anniversary is coming up, right? That's uh, yeah. the 15th. Goddamn. Yeah, I think the 15th is our wow. anniversary, the fourth anniversary. 2019, right? Yeah. I'm not doing math right now. Yeah, it's about four years. <laughs> how, long have been, how long have we been doing this shit? Oh, no. How about 174 uh, issues worth? Yes. That, that's how I like to go about it. You don't think of how long Batman has been running and shit. You think he's on issue this month and, you know, it's rebooted after this many times. We've been doing it too long. We're going we're gonna to have to, you know, we're going to have to reboot the show, right? <laughs> the new new 52? Yeah. <laughs> we're in new 52 this shit right now. <laughs> I was the oldest one. Three years Max, ago. All right. Three years I'm going to have to rename the show. Uh, Max Rickzilla and fucking, uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Ray Doom Effort Grayson. Right? <laughs> I don't, Grayson. Yeah, Effort, October 15, 2019. That was our anniversary, first video up on the channel. Wow. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. Look, look up. Yeah, you go back and watch the old episodes and see how poorly we've aged in the last couple of years. I think we got worse. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah, no, no spring chickens. I don't know. This was before Zoom, though, right? We were like, we were like sitting all side by side, and Rick was off camera. Yeah, yeah. Those those shows were fun. Oh, man. People I call it the good old days. <laughs> people like, people getting up to go to use the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. in the middle. Of- <laughs> oh, grandma, you. grandma interrupting sometimes. That's, those are my favorite ones right there. <laughs> grandma, we're filming the YouTube show. <laughs> <laughs> Leave us alone. Uh, all right, oh. so we're gonna be talking all right. About- where, where you at, Lori? Where you at? Uh, uh we're gonna be uh talking about Keith Griffin, the great Keith Gif- Griffin, writer, artist, uh, his passing this week. Uh, Daredevil, uh, TV show, uh, kind of a mess going back to uh, back to formula, uh, going back to formula on the Daredevil show, uh, and uh, the Iron Claw trailer and uh, the death of physical media. We're gonna talk about a few things. I got a pretty awesome pull list this week, too. Uh, me and Hondo attended uh, the Godzilla uh, event at Super 7. So, uh, yeah, so thanks a shout out to those guys. Well, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Fun little time. We got to watch Godzilla, look at some toys, and drink some tequila. It was great. Uh, Hondo, of course, showed up uh, 20 minutes before it was over. So, uh, <laughs> he's on Hondo time. More like 10 minutes before it was over. Yeah. Damn, that's perfect. That's perfect, Hondo, right there. That's well, I came, in, I came in the scene where. Godzilla and Jet Jaguar are teaming up on Megalon. So yeah, you pretty much that. came in for the last fucking fight. Yeah. Well, we, well, we already watched the movie That's already. The we watched movie. Godzilla versus Mega Godzilla, and then we were like, "All right, let's watch it. Let's watch a little bit more. One more." And so we watched the end of a. Uh, he missed that. So he he missed a whole a movie, movie, a movie already, and only came in for the end of the last movie. Yeah. yeah. Damn, Hondo. Straight up Hondo shit right there. That, That's perfect, Hondo. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Like we're about to leave. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, a couple of things I picked up uh, in the pool list section of the show. Uh, Hondo, our returning champion, how you doing? Greetings. Um, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. Had a late one last night, and uh, you know, just feeling a little recovery on Saturday. Um, <laughs> but but glad to be here and glad to talk about all all things nerdified and you know glorious. Good to see you guys. Glorious. Especially you, Max Effort. Speaking of which, how you doing, Mr. Effort? I'm good, man. Good. Feeling good. 
Feeling, good. feeling a bit oh, sexy. Yeah, it's like the fucking end scene of fucking trading places, bro. I fucking feel great. <laughs> feeling Max, good. Uh, Max effort is back. Uh, Renee put some uh, comments in yesterday. So, uh, sup, uh, what's up, Renee? Oh, uh, yeah. Woo, woo, woo. Pump it up, make some noise. I just woo wooed it and he fucking knew yes. it. <laughs> Uh, oh wow! <laughs> we were sucked ass. No blood, curling, evil, sat- satanic uh, suspense. Uh, I think we called that one. That <laughs> this movie looked like. Oh, I, I still kind of want to see it. I'm not going to pay for it. No, but I still want to. I still want to see it because the thing is, uh, this will be his what third, third egg. Yeah, he's done in horror. Go 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 make yeah. go make fucking comedies again, make bro. Some comedies don't. No, yeah, don't. Who he, who, who did it? Uh, uh, David. David Green. Yeah, uh, the guy who directed the uh, the Halloween. Trilogy, the the new yeah. one. Uh, yeah, he. What comedy him. did he do? He's uh Danny McBride's boy, so a lot of Danny McBride stuff he would uh, he would direct. Oh, I think he did Super Bad, right? Didn't he do Super Bad? I think he did. Oh, Super Bad is funny. Yeah, yeah, but this the whole thing. It's just like uh, and and he had promising career. I mean, the first the first one was really good, uh, first Halloween, but he he just. Got in over his fucking head, like it just. Oh, he did Pineapple oh, no. Express. Yes, yes, and your and highness. your and your, and your highness. Uh, your that that was pretty good. <laughs> your highness was pretty good. <laughs> your highness is all right, dude. I prefer yeah. Pineapple Express. Oh yeah, for sure. Did you watch uh, uh the director's cut of uh, Your Highness? Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's it's all it's all right. I, it's a fun I, movie to put it, on it, in the background. But the thing is, for me, uh, it's a forgettable one, dude. Yeah. I, I, I don't remember. I don't go to. It's not my go to when I fucking I remember, remember shit. Chop it off. Pineapple Minotaur Express. Dick. Come on. Huh? <laughs> I remember the fucking chopping off the Minotaur's dick. <laughs> All of that shit. All of that shit was funny, but it's forgettable, bro. Uh, Chris, uh, happy I, Saturday night. Crying with the cheeseburger. <laughs> crying with the cheeseburger. Uh, Lori, greetings and salutations, gentlemen. Let me know in those Happy Saturday. I haven't Oops. seen any gentlemen around these. Parts. Yeah, yeah. There's no gentlemen around Big these. Rock. These parts here. Rick Rockstar. What's up, Rick Rockstar? Rick Rick. Uh the Grammios were awesome. Grandma cameos. <laughs> Grammios. Yeah. Okay. That's that sort of should be our award show, the Grammios. <laughs> I I agree with that. We're gonna have to give a hey, do do an award show for uh fucking third uh fourth, third, fourth year anniversary <laughs> or issue two hundred. We should have um do a happy award. Saturday the fourteenth. Oh, yeah. dude, shit happens today. Watch out, man. It's not Friday the 13th. It's today. <laughs> beware. 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 Be wary. Uh, so we'll talk. Uh, let's, uh, let's see. Let's, uh, let's talk. Uh, let's talk a couple trailers, and then we're going to get into, uh, uh, then we're going to get into um, some, uh, some of the sad news. Uh, let, well, let's uh, talk a little bit about uh, Dick Buckus. Buckus pa- passed away uh, this, a uh, uh, couple, uh, this week. So, uh, more than just like a football player, he was like just kind of an icon. Like when you think about football in the 60s and 70s, like a football player, you think of Dick Buckus because he was just that quintessential player. Uh, then he like kind of dabbled in like Hollywood. He did some sitcoms. Uh, he did some cameos. A lot of, like Basically, if he had a football movie, uh, Buckus would like cameo either has like an announcer. He was like the announcer in uh, Any Given Sunday. Uh, he, uh, not in Game of Summer, um, Last Boy Scout. Uh, oh, and, yeah, he was Friday yeah, yeah. night. <laughs> Friday night, good so just uh, you know, a legendary Chicago Bear. You know, uh, just if you want to see some hilarious clips, just go online, watch Dick, Buck, Dick Buck, Buckus at a, uh, as a football player. He was hilarious, he would taunt the shit out of the, <laughs> the other players, uh, when he could get away with that kind of shit back in the day. Uh, but he was just a quintessential football player, man. And, and a, just kind of an icon, man. He was a football icon, man. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, Hondo, what are your thoughts on the the great Dick, Dick Buckus? Well, back in the day, I used to watch um, like old highlights of old NFL films with the great the John Facenda, who who had that voice, the Frozen Tundra, mm-hmm. of, and mm-hmm. and they and they would talk. They would show players like. Old school players like Dick Butkus and and he was savage, man. He was like such an imposing kind of like <coughs> kind of he kind of changed the game of football with, with his style of play. And 
his trash talking and he would try to put fear into the, the opposing quarterbacks to the point that, yeah, he became more than a, just a football player. Like they would put him in movies and, and, and TV shows and things like that. Just, you know, because he, he was so, so big of a figure in football, you know, and, you know, he played in a time where I, I guess like TV was still in the early stages. So, you know, uh, yeah, man, that's a, a that's a big one. That's a big yeah. loss for yeah, us. Yeah, icon, icon, man. Like, yeah, Iconic, yeah, yeah definitely. You know, you, know, you knew him. You knew his voice. He was just a football, football guy. Yeah, that's was. These were tough, tough Mino sobs. You know. Yeah, <laughs> but Rick Fox, uh, the Bears, the Bears. The Bears yeah, uh, Mister uh, Effort. Dude, I remember him from hella stuff. Uh, <clears throat> I mean. Just like Alex said, the guy's a legend. Uh, and it was guys like, what, Lawrence Taylor, Dick Butkus, uh, you know, guys like Patrick Willis, the the linebacking core, Mike Singletary. They're all cut from the same cloth. And mm -hmm. I think it started, like, with guys in the 60s. I mean, there were guys before him. But, like, they call him the maestro of mayhem, the robot of destruction, Dick the enforcer uh so yeah, yeah. I, i've seen all the the old film too especially when they were showing you know mm -hmm. you're watching an nfl nfl uh game and then they show you the highlights of the great players that come before and the guy was a beast and he had charisma man uh did a lot of movies i remember him probably as early i'm trying to uh, hamburger you guys remember hamburger the movie uh, that sounds familiar. yeah i don't know if, where the guy goes to hamburger college and he learns how to make Buster Burgers and all this shit. Dude, it's a great 80s movie. It's I think it's on YouTube. It goes hamburger? Over. It's called Hamburger the Movie. Uh, I remember Hamburger Buster. Hill. He plays uh, like like a Captain Harris kind of uh, dude from Police Academy. Just like, there to foil like the, the, the recruits coming in because, you know, he's going to wash them out. Uh, he, was in a, he was in any given Sunday, right? He was an opposing coach. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's yeah right. He was, he was right. on the other sideline. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I can't remember. He, I'm trying to remember if he was in DC Cab or not. I do. I, I kind of vaguely remember that he might have been part of the other, uh, other rival cab company. He just seems that kind of guy to be an antagonistic dick to the fucking you know good people. My, but one of my favorite cameos was in Necessary Roughness, when all the mm -hmm. inmates come off the bus, and he's like the, the representative that you know, as one of the captains. Then they start closing in on all the NFL greats, Jerry Rice, you know, fucking, I'm not going to mention that guy's name, but you know, all these greats. And he just comes so polite and he's just like, gentlemen, we're here to have a good game. We're big fans. And let's just remember to have fun out there. And after that, the, the game just goes awry. But <laughs> Dick, Dick Butkus, look up his, look up his movies. I am. Look, I'm looking yeah, it up right now. Go, go, go watch him too. That's the Ryan song. Johnny Dangerously. Yeah, Johnny Dangerously. Yeah, he was led the to Sleepy Hollow, nineteen eighty. Yep. Blue Thunder. Yeah, he did I'm a lot of like TV cameos. He did a lot of, like you he know did Night Court. He was on Night Court. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, he did Night Court. Yeah, he was on a lot of shit, man. Yeah. Um, I, I'm I'm happy when when no are, way. Uh, yeah, Gremlins I'm happy when, too. He was in Gremlins yeah. too. Yeah. He was in uh, Gremlins. Lori, uh, I legit got Buckus and Dicka mi mixed up. The Bears. Oh no no! Don't don't confuse them. Yeah, I love like like what guy with a name Dick Dick Buckus. Like you know, you're not fucking with that guy, man. Like yeah, that's how tough. Like it's like a that's boy like a boy named Sue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So legendary football player, legendary icon. Uh, will truly be missed. Uh, looks like he kind of laid low the last few years of his life, which is good, man. He earned it. You know, had a, you know he played football when he worked. He, they, you know, they would just rub dirt and go right back in. So uh, nice. it was a different time, man. Those guys really. Try to murder each other, man. So, uh, legendary uh, Dick Buckus, man. Uh, R.I.P. to you, sir. Uh, and uh, he, he's playing some pickup games up in the up in the weird blue yonder. That's um, a hell of a pickup game, bro. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hell of a pick. So, I've got That's some it. good bands up there. Got some good uh, good uh, football players and uh, good wrestlers. Uh, so, speaking of wrestlers, uh, the Iron Claw had a trailer uh, this week. Uh, that dropped. Uh, this is a uh, starring Zach Efron, 
uh, the uh, what's his name, uh, Jeremy Allen White from the Burr. Speaking of the Bears, uh, and uh, yeah, just a bunch of a uh, bunch of a uh, bunch of actors. This looks super legit. This uh, Sean Durkin is directing this. Um, don't really super recognize the name, but if you don't know the story of the uh, the Iron Claw, the Von Eric family. Uh, it's super, super tragic. Uh, if you want to like, kind of like go into it fresh, I maybe not look it up. But if you want to like, kind of uh, know the feel, oh, I thought it was Rick. Um, oh, you want to know the? <laughs> Just kind of look up some of their stories. It's very tragic. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of the. <laughs> I, they're talking my language. <laughs> what is he? What is he saying right now? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we can't, we can't, we can't say those things on the show. That's why Alex had to go take care of him. It's like it's like our two just cursing. Sorry, right, man, the birds are making the chirp. Uh, I'm used to it, man. Uh, so yeah, the Von Eric, the Von Eric. <laughs> sorry, this is a very tragic story. We shouldn't be laughing. Uh, but uh, yeah, the Von Erics. Uh, if you look them up, it's a very tragic, sad story. There's some suicides, uh, some bad luck with a uh, lot. Some of their. Uh, folks so near foot losses and uh you know uh some sad stories if you know. uh, yeah this is a big big family in texas they were a big wrestling family uh very well known uh like probably not known to the mainstream folks but like I think <coughs> tornado might territory be wrestling uh, yeah uh, texas tornado was probably the most famous one to come out of there because he went to wwe wwf uh, F at the time so he'll probably he'll probably be like more the most mainstream. But if you're a wrestling fan, you've heard that Von Eric family, uh, you've heard of their history. They had a big time history. Oh, look at I see Kenobi lurking in the back. He just like popped his little head up in the thing. Looked around. He's like, yeah. it was like that creature in a, a New Hope when it popped up on the, on the track back. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> totally missed it too. You know, like right awesome now, you gotta watch that back. He's just like right, 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 right on your shoulder. He's just like there looked he is. around and went back down. Oh, there you go. Like, it's like tremors, dude. Fucking just fucking little graboids going everywhere. Uh so yeah, so the Van Eric a Von Eric family, uh tragic wrestling his, a story. This looks like they're taking it super seriously. This is opening up in December 22nd, so that means Oscar. Uh, they think Oscars for this movie. Uh, but uh, yeah, the trailer looks really good. There's some good music with the trailer too. Uh, yeah, what'd you think of this one, uh, uh, Mr. Effort? Dude, uh, I, I mean, I know the story really well, and uh, I'm just happy that this is such a tragic story of this family, and the story needs to be told. Wrestling fans already know this story. Mm. I mean, we've been hearing the story. Well, at least I have since you know I started wrestling. You always hear the name Von Eric. Mm -hmm. in the background legends in, yeah in 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 when it comes to you know uh the magazines when you hear commentating sometimes in different in different places they'll mention the names of von erics and i was like i didn't really know i knew about them but i didn't really see get to see any of them until carrie von eric the texas tornado came to wwf at the time you know and it it, it just you know solidified because when you see the guy and you're like god damn this guy's fucking jacked you know he's and he's pretty good in the ring. You know, it's everything that we've heard is everything that I've heard is pretty much showing up to be true. Like this fucking family is legendary. And then later on, you start hearing on more. Oh, why didn't you didn't see his other brothers? And then you hear of his tragic passing. Uh, like you said, I was wondering why they waited till like so deep. And, you know, you mentioned earlier when we were talking, this is going to get an Oscar. And I, I just see the Zac Efron. I know I know people don't like him, but I, I think the guy has been picking up his game. He's I trying think, yeah, to he's turn it around for me on this. Yeah, this he's right trying here. to he's trying to do a lot of things. He was great as Ten Bunny in the Netflix. Uh, if you yeah, know, yeah. yeah, he yeah. was fucking awesome. He, he 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 played it really well. He's trying to shed that whole that whole image that he that he's had. He doesn't want it, and I, I just from the trailer, dude. I really want to see this. This is from Apple, right? Is this? Uh, I don't think oh, so. Oh, no, it's 824. It's 824. Yeah, 824, yeah. It's 824. Yeah. Uh, I, dude, I, I can't wait for this, man. I, yeah, I yeah. really want to see. This is this is definitely, like, must-watch for me. I have to go yeah, see yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, this is a must-watch. Yeah, this is must watch. But, yeah, even if you're not a wrestling fan, I think this, this story will speak, you know, just try. And it's cool that they're taking, like, wrestling seriously nowadays. We're, not, we're done with the days of, like, Ready to Rumble and all these, like, goofy-ass wrestling. No one takes it seriously. Now we're getting, like, really good, you know, like, wrestling. Like, we got dramas. 
yeah, heels on uh, stars. Uh, I watched the first three episodes. I was kind of uh, almost kind of mirroring that story, like a family of uh, wrestling, a wrestling family. Kind of, yeah. it looks like they take take a lot from the Van Von Erics for sure. Uh, Hondo, you just watched the trailer, man. What'd you think of it? Oh man, it looks so good. Um, I I I think yeah, I'm I'm definitely uh, turned around my views on um, Zach Efron. Um, he was actually my pick. I wanted him to play Namor because he had, mm. he had he had the physique, you know. And I don't know. I just feel like his eyes and it, like just give him some little eyebrow work, and he could have been Namor. But uh, yeah, he got all buffed out for this role as um. He looks fucking jacked, man. He looks they, jacked for, them, man. Yeah, they're doing they're doing that Troy uh, Brad Pitt fucking juice right there. Yep. Yeah, they they look they look all fucking super like Jeremy Allen White, dude. Like when you I saw him, I was like, dude, he's jacked just like fucking Car like Carrie was. Like yeah. he is fucking big. He looks like Carrie, other than like you know just some of the facial features, but the the hair they got the hair fucking perfect. Yeah. yeah, you can't fucking like you can't fake that mane. So yeah. let let me ask you guys. Um, so basically the Von Erics, what, what there were three of them, four, four, four. brothers. Okay, and then. And and they wrestled uh, like in the late seventies, eighties. Yeah, they were they were. So their dad had a promotion, or or I think or his dad was big in one of the promotions, and that's where they were. It, it, promotions back in the day, it's not like how, how WWE and AEW are now. Those are the big companies. The indies now, uh, that's kind of the territories. Like uh, what's what's the one out, out here, Ray uh, Pacific uh, P, Wrestling? P, uh, yeah, P P W P J P W. A P W G, yeah, yeah. Every 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 part of the PWG country. PWG South. South. Every South every South part South. of the country had its own promotion. So like, yeah. they, and and wrestlers would move around and like keep it. They fresh get loan, their, they get loaned out to like another promotion. Yeah, like some had like you, you only hear about them, you know. Yeah, like the legend of Ric Flair, or the legend of Roddy Piper. They would move around like they would stay. Jerry Lawler. Like, they would stay for a while, build you know, do a storyline uh, for a few months, few like a year or two, and then move on to the next territory. And like there was no like cable TV back then, so no one like no no one saw these guys unless you were like reading magazine wrestling magazines, you wouldn't know who these guys were. So they would come to these fresh territories. Then and Vince McMahon had the idea of like the cable TV and merge all of them, buy up all the territories, get all the best guys together, and like put it all on TV, uh, so everyone could watch. So it pretty much changed the game. Yeah, so you can see that they were coming from like you know, a smaller promotion, they were getting pushed because that's the, you know, the boss's son or, you know, yeah, they're, they're all the boss's kids and shit. They're really good though. And yeah, yeah dude, right. they, the they, iron claws they, reference to his uh, finishing move where he fucking move. grab your fucking face and like squeeze the shit out of it. Cause he had big, massive hands. So yeah, the iron claw is his finishing move. That's the, that's why it's called that. Yeah. It's, oh, uh, wow. Yeah. I can't wait for this man. Yeah. That looks, it looks really good. Yeah. The trailer looks good. Uh, yeah, uh, Lori's uh, Gal uh, Garcia Bernal is doing a wrestling movie as well. Uh, has a luchador. It's called uh, Cassandra. I want to see, see that, that too. Yeah, I, it's, I, it's, it's on. It's on Amazon Prime. Oh, is it? Well, it is. Okay, uh, Cassandra. Like yeah, it's yeah. it's it looks like a really good movie about the Exoticos back in uh, uh yeah. in Mexico, Lucha Libre, dude. It's yeah, pretty was, sick. And he was like openly gay, and like he was like you know, it's like trying to deal with being a wrestler and and being that part of his character, and like yeah, it's it's, it's yeah, it's, they, they're they're like it, they're the. They're the jobbers. That's what they're supposed to be. They're the jobbers. But because this guy was getting over, promoters couldn't fucking like overlook it. But sometimes that doesn't sit too well with the boys in the back. You know, they don't want to be, oh, well, he's a jobber. He's not supposed to be getting over. Well, you're not doing anything to get over. This guy is. He's he he fucking did the character fucking right, man. I definitely want to see this because I Gal Garcia Bernal is a fucking great actor. Dude. Really good actor, yeah. Oh yeah, he's yeah. He, I love him in World by Night, man. He, yeah, there's so many other things that he's he's like the best thing about that movie, old. Uh, but no, oh, yeah. suck. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's I, the I, best I, thing I, about I it. I never saw it. I wanted to see it, but then I just heard terrible things. Um, yeah, it looks it looks like a good movie, man. Good wrestling movie. I'm I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, so something I was excited about now I'm kind of like taking a little back to. Uh, looks like Daredevil: Born Again uh, is going back uh, into the lab. Uh, apparently, they filmed uh, almost half of the se eighteen episode season, uh, and then uh, during the writers' strike, uh, actor strike, uh, Kevin Foggy uh, kind of went in with the execs and looked at the footage they shot, and 
Uh, they were not happy. Uh, so this is a big fucking deal. This is a big, they've already spent a lot of money on this. So if they're going to go back and redo all this stuff, they said they might use some footage, like some of the uh, footage they might be able to use. But apparently it was not looking good. So they fired the directors. They fired all the writers. And they're basically starting from square one. So this is a big, big loss uh, for Marvel. And this is going to be a big hit. Because a lot of people were, like, excited about this. Because those Netflix Daredevil uh, uh, shows were really highly regarded. Uh, so this is, uh, yeah, I'm not sure, like, like uh, which way they're going. It looks like Marvel's trying to write the ships before they uh, go out there. I'm like... I'm kind of thinking, I was like, why didn't you guys do this before? Like, you know, it's, it's this could be a really good thing or this could be uh, a bad thing. Maybe it was great and they just didn't see it. And so maybe we're losing out on a good, uh, a great series and we're going to try to do a mediocre Daredevil series. So this is kind of interesting. Uh, this is Marvel. Marvel is taking some L's right now. Uh, they're not, uh, they were just kind of riding high and just kind of printing money as uh, before. Now it's like everything's kind of being questioned. Uh, everybody's kind of like second guessing their, themselves. Uh, the Blade movies uh, was supposed to come out in a couple months. Uh, <laughs> that got pushed back. Yeah, uh, they even started filming, have they? Uh, no, they didn't start. They had to re redo the script. So, uh, so the uh, script apparently was a mess. So Marvel's taking some L's right now, man. It's not the you know, it's not not not, not happy and hunky dory in the Marvel universe right now. Uh, so uh, yeah, so Daredevil going back to formula, uh, starting from square one. Hondo, what do you think of this, man? What do you, what are your thoughts on this? Wow, I uh, I mean, I think when now that you guys are bringing this up and i i'm thinking that maybe they they were too ambitious because how many episodes it was supposed to be like 18 18, or, 18 episodes yeah. that's, that's too much that's too much <laughs> like, like hour long 18 hours of like daredevil like yeah, they never said it was like hour long <laughs> and a half hour long but, uh, oh, okay. they, never well, said, they never said the length but you never know but usually the Marvel shows like 40 minutes 45 minutes usually Okay, um, maybe they went to they. I don't know. It sounds like they kind of went. Uh, they were overly ambitious, uh, you know. Like, and and I'm sure when they thought of it, they they took they call it Born Again, but they take some elements of the story of Born Again and they add a whole bunch of other storylines, other Daredevil storylines, and mash it all together. And I think it it becomes too convoluted. Like you're mixing up too many stories. You're trying to, you know change things and i i don't know i just feel like i i was really looking forward to it if they would have kept it like the original series which was great you know if they would have kept it at least in spirit like maybe not as violent or maybe not a maybe a little less violent because it's disney but this is a bummer i mean uh, hopefully hopefully they come back and 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 bring it, you know, make make something good out of it. But I'm kind of like bummed out. Like, no. Uh, Rick Rock, Rockstar. Uh, I personally think the uh, the shows are too short these days. 18 episodes for a season is so much better than nine. It depends on the story. I think. Uh, I think. Uh, I think don't don't like try to push it. Like I, I like the options of like, hey, I want to tell the story, but it's only it only needs six episodes or only needs eight episodes. I, I think some of the, I think that was one of the issues with some of those uh, Marvel shows on Netflix. They had like had to make thirteen episodes, so some of those episodes were filler. Like like I, I think I, uh, I, what Iron Fist didn't need, need to be thirteen episodes. Oh my god. Uh, Page did not need to be 13 episodes. Uh, Daredevil could they had some filler in there, they could have cut down some of the episodes. I think so. I think it's uh, tell the story and don't try to like shoehorn like stories and like these episodes that don't mean shit uh, just because you have to meet, meet a quota of episodes. So I think ha, tell write your story and do as much as you need, like do make it all right. So my story is 10 episodes. But then the studio wants, oh, we need to make it 13 episodes. So you got to stretch bullshit out and it just kind of, I don't know, just kind of takes you out of it. Uh, so I don't know, it, 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 tell your story and do as many episodes as your story takes. Uh, Mr. Effort, uh, while you're fighting your cat. Yeah. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think of this, man? Uh, dude, this is uh, what I'm expecting out of Marvel right now. You know, they're panicking. Why? It's not because they're being too ambitious. They have no direction after fucking Infinity War. They don't know what they're building towards right now. Uh, because the big thing is, they had an idea with Kang. 
Jonathan Majors is going through some major shit that they're gonna you're trying to cancel him over. So they're not fully invested in what's going forward. They don't have a plan B. They they're fucking super panicky right now. And this is on everywhere because not only uh, is this show getting overhauled, but now Disney's sounds like they're gonna be placing showrunners for like you know future things going forward. It's like, wait, why are you filming whole fucking things and not pilots? You just green light shit and you're expecting this motherfucker is biting. Yeah, they, they treat it, they treat it like oh. like uh, like movies. Like D- TV and movies are different, different. Uh, like the, the, the line is definitely blurred, but you need you need somebody that's in charge of the show to keep it. Keep, like you need showrunners, man. Yeah, and the fact yes. that they're just figuring that out now, like, Not exactly. <laughs> right now, you're figuring this shit out. Like this is just, I, I I don't get it. I don't get what you guys are doing. Like they're they could have like honestly, uh, I'm not sure how far along they are, but they could have got fucking guys like the the Duffer Brothers. To, to come out and fucking film something for them. Like, I would like to see Duffer Brothers take something like, you know, Generation X or or something if they're going to do, like, series and stuff like that. Because these, like, and show run it. Because they've proved that they can show run a, they can do, uh, they can do mm-hmm. a show. Uh, they, there's so many good showrunners out there uh, to to take over these properties. And I, I, so how are you guys been doing your shows? What have you guys been doing? Because... Although there's a lot of shows that I like that people don't like, people don't like She Hulk. I don't get it. You know, it's like, oh, I don't like it. Well, you don't read comics. Uh, yeah, I, I, I love She Hulk. <laughs> I, yeah, so do I. But that's people who don't read comics. That's that's telling you. You know, you you fucking like, hey, Rick, check this out. I, I fucking read it. I'm like, oh, so this is what they're going for. He's like, goes, yeah. So it's it's a great book. It's a great show. That's all they're doing. They're adapting it. People, oh, I don't like that. So yeah, well, I mean, a lot of times people like get to and they jump on the bandwagon. They don't even watch the show. They just see internet hates this. Yeah, so I hate troll. it now too. I like oh, internet no, told me that I should Snyder not hate. It. The same thing, you like know, Ahsoka. Snyder. So I like everybody, like oh, I, I read on the internet the Star Wars sucks. It's woke. I hate Star Wars now. But did you watch it? No. Okay. Well, no. Yeah. Then don't have an opinion on it if you didn't watch it. Yeah, it's it's. It's too bad that you know people are succumb to influence like without investigating themselves. Yeah, have a, the best yeah. thing is always see for yourself and then yeah. make yeah exactly formula, dude. formulate your own opinion. Don't, don't don't like rely on Rotten Tomatoes to go fucking watch a movie. If you're interested in watching a movie, go watch it. If you if you're if you hear somebody's review that you know, go watch it. Yeah. but don't yeah, fucking like, rely review, on all like, this shit. Even then, like there's reviewers I like a lot, but then they have some shit takes. Like in like like oh like really are you like that's your opinion on this like that was awesome what are you talking yeah it's about? okay to have a descending opinion over yeah. people that you usually agree with I mean you and I have it all the time yeah. you know we built a whole <laughs> friendship on <laughs> yeah exactly but that's the whole thing it's just like there are people people are sheep man you know that's the problem people are sheep oh I like what you say I like what you say and then you start saying the same shit but you have no basis in what you're what you're talking about you didn't go fucking look at that shit yourself. You didn't get the information for yourself and read and watch or hear something to have actually have an opinion on it. You just yeah. took somebody else's opinion and fucking adopted it as your own. It fucking sucks. I don't know. Man. I, I think it's dirt. I, I I think there's a chance this won't even happen now. I think they're just gonna. They might just scrap it. I I what I think they're they're afraid of is a Netflix show was fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. So really and, and I don't know what they're what they're expecting if they're gonna be continually doing that kind of. Uh, because the one thing that's different is Daredevil is very different from all these other shows. Like all these other Marvel shows. Marvel shows are kind of fucking, hey, look, bright neon green like a fucking... Yeah, uh, they're kind of paint like by a, numbers like a, a lot of them. Exactly. Daredevil didn't feel like that. Daredevil felt gritty. Yeah. Daredevil, that, you know, when they're the, fighting the comic, shit. Yeah, the Frank Miller like kind of started that gritty Daredevil. That's what kind of made Daredevil like go from the Wally Wood kind of like standard superhero character to a next level where he became like, you know, Basically, kind of became Marvel's Batman uh, at that yeah. point. So, yeah, but I think Marvel's scared to do anything that Netflix did. That's why they kind of went with Born Again, kind of you know like a ref, you know a play on oh, words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're rebooting him in a way. I just don't think the reboot's going to go well. I honestly, the one thing that I think I looked at the the the, the way they were going to do the suit, I don't think that's going to look great on screen. 
Yeah, I, I, over I, and over. I don't think it's gonna look good on screen. Yeah, give me that red I, I, suit. It was fun for like a couple episodes, but I want, I want the give, give me the red. Hell, give me the fucking cheesy '90s outfit. Fucking, uh, that'll probably look better on screen. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I, I, I don't know, man. This is this is kind of a mess. Uh, uh, like, it's definitely one of the shows I was looking forward to. Like, I love Charlie Cox. I love Vincent D'Onofrio. It's great. Uh, so getting yeah, just getting those characters in the MCU. Uh, you know. <laughs> He's big. He's literally attacking me. He's like, he knows I'm doing something, and he's like, "Nah, fuck you. You pay attention." Yep. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this uh, this uh, this is gonna be interesting to see. Uh, but hopefully, it's for the better. Hopefully, they they're gonna call audible on a lot of this shit they're trying to do, and just kind of get the shit out of there. Like Echo's gonna come out, and they're just gonna like put it out there. And I think a couple like uh, what was it? Um, Ironheart has been filmed. It's been it's if it, it got filmed two years ago. And that's sitting on the shelf, so that's kind of scary too. So, I, I, yeah, I don't know, man. I think they 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 sh they should have focused on the X Men, should have focused on the Task Force. You know, they got those rights. Uh, uh, <laughs> Leo, uh, what did you miss about Daryl? Yeah, they're uh, they're canceling, Reboot, well, they rebooting reboot. it. They filmed they're rebooting the reboot. Episodes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're rebooting the reboot. Yeah, they filmed like half of the new episodes, and they looked at it and said, uh, "No, no, that's that's a no for me, dog." So yeah, they're going. That's they're, a no from me, dog. <laughs> so we'll see, man. They reboot it, but uh, hopefully for the better. Or uh, like uh, they reboot it and it sucks. That's going to be more like, what the fuck are you guys doing? So uh, it's interesting time for Marvel, uh, the MCU, man. It's uh, they better bring in the fucking X Men soon, man. I need I need X Men in my life. I need Fantastic Four in my life. So get that shit Quite fucking going, Marvel. Stop fucking around. Question though. So now they're talking about showrunners. Who would you get to do the Daredevil? Honestly, I'd bring the fucking guys that fucking uh, Steve Denight who fucking did the original. That's what I fucking do. <laughs> bring the original guys back. Yeah, I just but they, that, see that that's the whole thing. You bring those guys back, that means you're doing that kind of show. Is Disney is Disney willing to go to do that kind of show? Well, they did Werewolf by Night. They're willing to go into a dark place, man. They're willing to get a little darker. Uh, with their I, show. I don't think Werewolf. I don't think Werewolf is, by Night is on the level of Daredevil. I still think uh, Daredevil's. Like I think Daredevil's right now, as far as TV shows, Daredevil's number one. I'm just talking about the grittiness, like you know, going going. I don't going. think it's as I don't think it's as gritty as Daredevil. Yeah, but they're you know, it's pretty violent. I'm just I'm just talking about the violence. Part. Black and white. Yeah, well, it's they're gonna color. have to show. They're gonna have to show blood in this. That's the whole thing. It's uh, Daredevil's, and not that they're you know you're showing blood like going in and out, but you know, yeah, it's a little gritty. He's gonna he gets get beat he's up. gonna get like, fucked up. Yeah, he gets beat up. That's part of his I just, charm. I just don't know if Netflix. I don't know if Disney's willing to go those kind. I, I agree with you. That's the route they should go. I don't think Disney's willing to go that route. Yeah. Uh, Big Leo. Uh, damn, due to the strike or just being lummies? Uh, uh, due, kind a little of, to the strike. They, a little to the strike. Well, well, they had time to, like, look at all their shit. The, they gave them, the strike kind of gave them time to, like, accept, uh, assess their what they got going. And uh, it was just not looking good. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see the footage. I, I want to see this, how bad it is. Uh, or, you know, maybe just, it, it, maybe they're going that dark direction. Like, no, we have to pivot and make it lighter. Or, you know, we don't know. We don't know. So, well, if, uh, if that was the, if that was the case, that means Disney is going exactly the way I thought it would go. They don't want to go that dark route. That's what I think. I, if, if, I, I'm hoping that's what it is, that they went dark. And they were just like, yeah, we don't, because I don't think they're ever going to change. Yeah, uh, Werewolf by Night was soft core gritty. <laughs> soft. Thank you. Yeah, I agree with that. It's good. It's gritty, but it's not Daredevil or Punisher level. Gritty, gritty like the mascot, or no gritty. <laughs> um, uh, what scary movies have you guys been watching for Halloween? Friday the Thirteenth uh, Marathon. Been, I got a couple. Uh, I got a couple. Uh, we'll, right, me too. Oh, that's, that, yeah, that'll go for the end. That's I finally fun. saw Hereditary. Oh yeah. It's it's yeah. it's okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's cerebral, you know. It wasn't. I mean, just because I heard so much hype. hype about it too. Yeah, don't don't stick your head out the, uh, the car window. That's all you got. Yeah, that's like, definite. Don't ever do make that. Sure that. Uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll talk more uh, closer to Halloween, kind of what the movie movies we're watching. But we'll, we'll, we'll we have a couple for our pull list. Uh, all right, let's go jump into. Uh, well, speaking of the movies and uh, you know of watching movies, uh, physical media uh, uh, took a, a, another hit today uh, be, uh <coughs> this past week best buy is going to be uh stopping uh doing blu-rays and dvds stop selling blu-rays and dvds <coughs> uh, in 2024 uh so this has kind of been happening a lot like there's a few targets that don't have dvds anymore like the uh, one i go to 
uh, doesn't have DVDs or Blu-rays anymore. Uh, so I was like, oh, this is a this is a sign that physical media is really on the way out. People are streaming more and more. Uh, people are not buying um, uh, buying movies like they used to, uh, but they they still make money and they're still you know it's it's not as much as they were, but it's so streaming is so all over the place now. Uh, I love I still love buying DVDs. I still love like, buying Blu-rays. I love going to like vintage uh, DVDs, uh, Blu-ray uh, places, and like finding like cutting movies you can't find anywhere. So uh, it, this has been going on for a while. Just pretty much like when once like Netflix, like Netflix this year stopped doing their DVDs and Blu-rays. So that was a big hit too. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of a uh, it's going to be kind of a niche thing I think going forward in the next few a few years where you do these special editions and people, you know, because people still want to buy these discs. I'm, you know, I know about a bunch of people that still like buying discs, uh, you know, still like uh, getting the physical media. I still like buying DVDs and watching the, you know, behind the scenes documentaries and stuff that are on the DVD. Some of them you can find on YouTube. You can find, there's places you can find them, but I just like having it all together. Uh, but this is a, this is a big hit. Best Buy was definitely like one of the last places you can go and buy Blu-rays now, like Target and, uh, I think Walmart and Best Buy were the only places you can go buy new Blu-rays, uh, Blu-rays and DVDs. Now it's kind of going like online. You can still find them on Amazon. You can still there's still uh, plenty of places you can buy uh, movies online. But it's uh, going out and to uh, you know a store and buying a new movie it seems like it's going to be harder and harder. Uh, so uh, yeah, so Hondo, you you buy uh, you still uh, in the um, physical media phase of your life. Uh, what do you think about this, man? We're we're a dying breed, man. I know it. It's it's sad. Um, I guess the only maybe maybe the light at the tunnel is that they will have uh they will have uh, uh DVDs and like specialty stores maybe will flourish like um kind of like the way records are sold today nowadays. You have record shops and maybe they'll have. And maybe all our all our DVDs and things like that will be uh, more. They'll have more value. They'll be like more of a, a collector's kind of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I, I just I, I like having the physical media too because I I feel a lot of these movies that are they're starting to get edited and they're starting to get like taking shit out of it. They're starting yeah. to like, you know, oh this guy said this thing. Oh, we got to take that out. That's not cool anymore. Uh, we we got to take this scene out right here. That's not cool anymore. So I don't like stuff being edited. Uh, so that's that's kind of a, a scary thing for me. That's why I'm buying these movies, these these so-called problematic movies, just because I'm I'm worried they're going to start editing these on streaming, and I'm not going to be able to see the original form of this stuff. Right. So uh, I'm starting to buy these movies that you know might get canceled at some point, like you know Blazing Saddles. Like they made oh this bad news work. bears. Bad news bears, uh, you know, just one of the guys, uh, you know, um, Soul Man. <laughs> there's, a, there's a few. <laughs> I love Soul Man. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, Lori, that sucks about physical media. Thankfully, uh, there are websites to find films, Criterion, Arrow, Severin, etc. I get all mine from there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's, that's good. It's be- the, this is going to be harder because this is a huge fucking, uh, yeah. you know, chain out there. They have Best Buy. Is Target going to do it next? Yeah. And See, what right, happens is when these two guys stop doing it, g- you have to remember that games right now, everything you can, they want you to buy games and stream and stream them. You know, it, it, it's because it's cheaper to fucking make, you know, the one that just reads and streams than adding a physical drive in there to, to you know, to go along with everything and have more physical moving parts. You know, just a streaming machine, it's there's really no real moving parts. It's all like circuit boards and shit, you know? Yeah. And uh, less chance to fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, it's, it's, it, it, yeah. So what, what do you, 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 you kind of like stepped away from kind of buying physical media yourself. You, you more like, uh, you're more of a streamer, a streaming kind of, I, I, I do stream it. I do stream it. But the thing is I have so much physical media right now. I have a lot of stuff still. Like, even though that I stopped buying stuff, I'm glad I stopped buying stuff because I probably would be another <laughs> bookshelf full of shit already. <sighs> yeah. And, welcome to my life. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> like I've even had to get rid of cases uh move cases into boxes and stick them on and then i just have you know books with with all my fucking this is my horror booklet this is my you know action booklet I, if i want to watch something I, I just go look in there it, it, i like physical i like physical media for the for the sense of this uh nothing beats putting in a disc and a menu greets you having to do with the movie then you could yeah. laugh at 
um that's back in the dvd days mainly uh but then you can Wait, go to the, had a good one yeah they're, <laughs> yeah uh fucking little little nikki had a good one too yeah uh, Wait, wait, it was like the TV channels, like you can flip the channels and shit. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> okay, Starship Troopers had a great one on their special edition. Uh, but would you like to know, you know more? <laughs> would you like to know more? I, I would actually. Here we go. Uh, but I, there, this, the extras that come with it. I like to see the original trailer sometimes. How they, you know, fucking mm -hmm. brought it out and reminisce. I like to hear the audio commentary by the director and you know the editor i want to hear the audio commentary from a couple of the actors i want to hear an audio commentary by some of the fucking special effects guys on how hard it, this shot was to make and uh, i want to see the documentary on making the fucking movie i want to get all these things because you know That's i like true. i like movies i like movies the one thing about streaming is that you don't get this uh i do give uh hbo max i'm not sure if they're still doing the same thing i, I like to give them credit for offering alternate versions of the movie yeah. uh you know, like so you can like, yeah, like that, yeah. you got the director's cut or the unrated uh, or, you know, the black and white version. They're very good at, at doing that. Streaming would streaming would get me and win me over completely is every time you choose a movie that you have the extras to go along with that. You know, yeah. would I pay, would I pay an extra five dollars a month on my streaming service to do that or seven dollars a month? Fuck yeah. Instantly. Yeah. Because I, I, I enjoy that. I yeah. could tell. I could fucking tell Ray. Hey, dude, you gotta fucking you know listen to the commentary over here. Yeah, and it, it's easy as pie just to go to it, but you, yeah. you can't do that right now. Like the the clerks commentaries, uh, like the mall rats, like comment those legendary, legendary. Yeah, and it, it, it's film school, man. The commentaries on those. Uh, yeah. the, uh, that's how I learned a lot about making movies. Is like listen to those commentary track. Listen to Robert Rodriguez talk about making movies. Listen to like Quentin Tarantino talking about movies. Uh, so it's it's it. it it sucks that the, that's going away and uh like yeah and like laurie said like easter eggs uh in some of the dvds i, I think some of the uh the early uh kevin smith ones had some easter eggs and stuff uh there was host fun to find yeah i remember early in the dvds there was like easter eggs you could find oh, on that. yeah i think there was one for monty python and the holy grail yeah like if you click on a certain thing or go to a, a certain page you could find like a hidden scene or some kind of deleted scene or some kind of gag that you know so yeah, it's yeah, it sucks, man. Uh, I'm I'm gonna hold on as long as I can. I'm definitely more picky on my purchases nowadays. Uh, like I definitely like there's certain shit I like. I'm okay with uh, just owning, uh, just seeing it on streaming. But there's certain stuff like Prey that just came out. Like I wanted that on uh, Blu-ray and I got uh, picked that up on Blu-ray. Uh, but there, I'm definitely more picky than uh, I was because I used to buy it pretty much everything. Like even if I kind of liked the movie, I would buy it just because I wanted, to, you know, watch it again. But uh, now, yeah, now I'm a little bit more picky. Just the more movies I really want to own and really want to know I'm going to watch again. I didn't want to watch the special features, but nothing's better than going into a Amoeba or a Rasputin here locally uh, to find like old movies that I, you know, I never haven't seen this movie before and I've heard about it, but I can never see it on streaming. And, uh, you know, and shit goes away, man. And uh, shit, like one day uh, it's on. They take it Netflix, off. And they take it off and they, you yeah. don't know where it's at. And or You're at the mercy of what they, what they allow or what they put. This no. is the thing that sucks too, though, with uh, with the streaming shit. Like you said, right? Not everything is streaming. I'm not sure. Has Dogma streamed? Nope. Yeah. Nope. See, so there's a lot of movies back in the day that I've been looking for, and little by little I find them, and I'm like, oh, okay, good. Like I've been looking for a movie called How I Got Into College for for a while now. Uh, I've also been looking for. I think they're called, it's called Masters of Mayhem. It's a movie with David Roche that they would show with on uh, HBO. You know, he's, you know, he's a biker and shit, but it's fucking, it's bad, but it's funny to me. Yeah, I just remember, and I like to watch it again, but there's so many movies that, that are like that, that, you know, that if they, if they aren't on a streaming thing or have like a deal with like a certain company, you know, if it wasn't like a Paramount movie, if you're fucking looking for Vestron videos, you're fucked. <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to find these companies, uh, these smaller companies that actually, you know, are, have anything that's on streaming. Uh, if you guys haven't seen how I got into college. Same director as One Crazy Summer. Same director as Better yeah, Off. Yeah, no, I remember that. Yeah, yeah I used to watch that. So, all the time. yeah, I've been, I've been looking for that movie, but it's just uh, it's nowhere on streaming. And that's the shit about streaming. If you were to put everything on there, everything, everything, I, I don't think you'd have a, a. I don't think we'd have a problem. But I mean, everything. I would pay extra for like, all that shit. You know, hard to find movie section. You know? Yeah. But you, there's other movie. If you can't find them on this streaming, you know, this stream usually has it. But if you can't find it over here, maybe this one has it. But what yeah. happens when none of them have it? 
and, and and the thing is too a lot of poor people like still buy dvds and uh you know they get, can't afford fucking 20 streaming services uh, you know they can't afford fucking like good inter- internet so there's still people buy like poor folks buy dvds still they still make dvds and that's a cheaper option for folks instead of buying you know uh, you know, paying for a streaming like a fourteen, fifty, uh, twenty dollar streaming service, they buy their ten dollar, you know, or five dollar DVD, and they're you know, people are happy with that. A bargain so, bin DVD, hey, a bargain yeah. bin DVD is a great. That's why I like go to Walmart sometimes. They got that big bargain bin of a uh, five dollar uh, Blu-rays, man. You find some good shit in there. So uh, about one once a month, I take my mom. We we go. I take her out to walk, and you know, like just get some exercise, and we we go to Amoeba Records. And she finds stacks of DVDs for a dollar each, two dollars each. And if you buy like five, they give you one free. So like, she has a, a whole library of old school DVDs, and you know, I just want to see the movie. I don't really need it to be, you know, the the highest quality Dolby surround yeah. sound. Although yeah. there is that option too, right? Like they restore them. You know, yeah, and that's a good point too. Like they they sound a lot better than some of the streaming services. Like their oh yeah, their sound mixes and sometimes are not that great. They're really and high quality. Sometimes stuff, yeah. the video quality and the, you sometimes if you don't have good internet, you're you're gonna like your movie's gonna pause in the middle of it, uh, you know, or get a little bit a little janky in the, uh, in the middle of watching a movie. I, it kind of irks me sometimes when I'm trying to I'm into a movie and it starts fucking glitching and like dude, you know, I turn my microwave on on certain streamers <laughs> and the fucking the, the video would pause. <laughs> you know, and yeah, it just this, it just fucking blocks the signal. It's hell, hella close. But uh, what the fuck? Hey, Lori, I completely agree about commentators and uh, or the behind the scenes storyboards, etc. Yeah, yeah, the storyboards are cool. I yeah. like looking at storyboarding. Yeah, yeah. Only uh, Lori only buys uh, movies and series I know will watch multiple times. Yeah, this is that's that's like uh, that's kind of the criteria for me right now. Like I was a little more l- less picky back in the day. Uh, have you ever found Turk 182 on a DVD yet, Rick? I, 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 know think, were- I think I think I can find it on DVD. What I wanted yeah. to do is try to find it on streaming. That's one of those things that's hard, like a hard to find movie. I loved. I don't know if you've seen Turk 182, guys. I've seen it. That movie yeah, pissed a- me off. Uh, not because of the movie is because uh, every time uh, there was a time uh, I think it was on HBO, and um, they w- I was. Trying to watch Godzilla versus Biollante because you couldn't find it everywhere. This is like the early like mid nineties. Uh, no, that no, and like every time it was it was on the menu, and I would like try to record it, like tape it, and it was fucking Turk one eighty two, man. Like every time it pissed me off. I was like, you're not Godzilla, <laughs> fuck you. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. Yeah, Turk one eighty two. It's a good. Uh, I like it, dude. It's a good movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, the thing I uh, about streaming is that what uh, we want. Uh, on streaming, a lot of the mainstream don't because they never heard of them. Yeah, yeah some of these movies like people don't give a fuck about. <laughs> like, yeah, if it's not, you know, uh, you know, some mainstream shit, they get lost in the, the time, and no one, like, no one knows about it. So, yeah, but uh, yeah, so I'm I'm gonna keep buying them. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, me too. Uh, I'm gonna keep uh, on the search. Uh, you know, find these movies and keep them. Yeah, I used to turn movies in uh, to Amoeba and stuff. Like, you know, I'm not gonna do that anymore. I'm just gonna keep them. Uh, just to have them, because you never know when you know. <laughs> Dude, I I, I, I traded in so many movies over the years, and I, I wish I didn't. I wish I would have kept a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I would have kept my video cassettes because they were in pristine condition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had, a, I had a lot of video. Of video I, I would, I could, I could have fucking auctioned them right now for fucking money. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, now it's a uh, you know it's uh, hey when the apocalypse happens and the internet goes down, everybody's gonna be like, hey, let's go to Race House. He has all the movies. Like you know what? Fuck you! You ain't coming in. You you fucking deal with your non movie life. Watch a dogma right now. Fuck <laughs> yeah. you guys. Go home. <laughs> Watching the commentary track for uh, yeah. Chase Mamie. It's hilarious. Uh, yeah, so, Trop- uh, I'm listening to the Tropic Thunder on a, uh, commentary. That one was hilarious. Was one. Yeah. <laughs> Tropic. If you haven't seen the Tropic Thunder commentary, Alex, you you gotta. No, listen I haven't. To yeah, because yeah, he Robert makes Downey Jr. He makes great. a comment in the uh, in the movie. He's like. I don't. I, uh, he's like talking about his action. He's like, I don't. I don't drop character until I do the uh, DVD. Uh, the DVD commentary. Like it, in the commentary, he's doing. Uh, he's doing. Lazarus. And then he trans trans listen. He gets out of character and direct, gets to his normal voice. It's pretty funny. At the end of it, yeah. When mm-hmm. the credits start rolling, that's when he turns into RDJ. It's fucking hilarious. Oh, I gotta see that. Yeah, yeah. it starts fucking with Jack Black the whole time. Oh shit! Wow. Yeah, that's fucking great. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So um, yeah. So, yeah. R.I.P. R.I.P. Physical R.I.P. DVD. 
no, uh, we had a good run. Uh, but you know, uh, it's the it's the year, it's the time of streaming, man. But I just hope they incorporate the all the extra shit that we uh, uh, we love of the the Blu rays and DVDs. So we'll see. Uh, all right, so uh, we're gonna go jump into our main topic. Uh, we're gonna talk about the late great Keith Griffin. Uh, Giffen, uh, I, can't, I keep on saying Griffin. Uh, keep uh, Keith Giffen passed away. Um, legendary uh, comic book, uh, kind of like more known for his writing. He was actually a comic book artist also, yeah. Uh, but he was de definitely mainly known for his writing. Uh, of course, he did uh, the the you know the great run on Justice League, the Bwahaha. Justice League. Uh, he drew, he drew uh, the Great Darkness Saga, Legion of Superheroes, very uh, beloved storyline. Uh, in uh, uh, back in the was it early eighties for that one, um, and just had a hand in so many, like creating so many characters, like really uh, mainstream, like mainstream uh, characters. Lobo, Ambush Bug. Uh, he had a hand in uh, creating Jaime Reyes. Uh, he had a hand, uh, you know, uh, with Doom Patrol. He had. Um, he just worked on so many things. Uh, uh, yeah, he just had a hand in his hand in so much stuff. Uh, he did, you know, but definitely no, his most famous work is definitely uh, the, the Justice League with uh, uh, Diametis. Uh, one of my favorite runs on Justice League for sure. Uh, but he, he, had, uh, he had, yeah, he, he did some art too. Uh, he, he wasn't a bad artist. He, his style would switch uh, back and forth every, uh, every uh, all the time. Uh, he would kind of copy different. Uh, there was some controversy with him in the '80s about him kind of um, copying somebody's uh, work and kind of, um, uh, you know, kind of lifting some uh, some other people's work. But uh, uh, so, uh, but like I said, more more known for his, uh, his writing, the Bwahaha ha uh, ha uh, Justice League is. You know, he wrote one of my favorite scenes of all time in a comic, uh, the One Punch scene. Uh, if you've never read that, uh, if you never read that uh, run. Uh, I would highly recommend picking it up. You can still, you know, you can find it pretty cheap. There's a big, uh, this is like the first uh, 20, 20 or so issues, uh, but fun stuff. Knew how to write comedy. Uh, Hondo, man, what are your thoughts, man? The great uh, Keith, uh, Keith Giffen passing away. Yeah, RIP. Um, I was fortunate enough to meet him in uh, 2019 at Dragon Con. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so I, I got a couple things signed from him. Um, I got, uh, of course, a very legendary Justice League. Yeah, that's an iconic cover right there. Iconic cover. This one, um, he was the co-plotter, I guess, yeah. co-writer. Co yeah. And uh, that was just a fun, fun time in buying comic books. Um, this is a really good run, of course. Um, I also have uh, these two. Uh, Lobo and Guy Gardner. That's yeah. Cool. And then he uh, he also co-created Lobo. That's his first appearance. And I got that one signed by Keith Giffen. Yeah, that, yeah, definitely probably his most famous creation. Yeah, Lobo. Yeah, Lobo. Yeah. Um, yeah, so another another comic book legend is uh, has left us, and uh, you know, rest in peace. Um, thank you for your good work, and uh, you know, long live comics. <laughs> uh, Mr. Effort, man, what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, dude. I mean, he did a lot of the fucking Blue Beetle shit. You know, like it. It was a, it was a lot of good work, and then I, I I've read a lot of his other stuff. Like just looking at it, yeah, Emerald. I'm not sure if he did he write he wrote Emerald Dawn, right? Yeah. Uh I don't know. He didn't draw that. Emerald Dawn? Just, yeah. Oh, uh, maybe. Lantern, yeah. Like he did a lot, he did Lantern. You know, I he did, he did a lot of the stuff that I fucking like to read. A lot Justice of DC League. stuff. Yeah. A lot of DC stuff. Yeah. A lot of DC I'm, I'm also looking, he did some Scooby Doo shit. The Scooby yeah, Apocalypse. That, yeah, the uh, yeah, I read that. That's uh, that wasn't that bad. Yeah, that was actually pretty uh that, this that came out a couple years ago. Yeah, so yeah. I'm just I know he did that and, and he also did like a booster gold book. So I yeah, good good writer, man. I, I really enjoy the stuff on Blue Beetle. I think that's what really you know drew me to the character. So you know, he's the guy who wrote it, so he's the one responsible. It's a great one. He illustrated this really good series, uh limited series, Doctor Fate. Oh it's, nice. it's, yeah, it's pretty that. good. That limited series, the artwork is is pretty good. 
Yeah. He did, uh, he did Invasion also. Uh, uh, yeah. Storyline yeah, Invasion for uh, DC. Uh, yeah, he did. Um, there was a couple other ones. He, yeah, Ambush Bug. If you remember Ambush Bug. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he wrote some uh, Annihilation, the Annihilation storyline from Marvel. Oh, nice. Oh. oh. He did some of that. Yeah, so yeah, he had his hand in a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, so let me see. Emerald Dawn, he did. So, uh, yeah, he did the art. Yeah. Uh, Jared, Jared Jones. Oh, yeah, don't, don't look up that guy. <laughs> that guy's a little problematic. In the Gerard line. Jones, huh? Canceled. <laughs> yeah, very canceled for sure. Gerard canceled Jones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he wrote. Uh, yeah, he wrote uh, part of uh, Emerald Dawn. It was a great, great story. Uh, unfortunately, the other writer is a fucking weirdo. Um, yeah, Ambush Bug. Look up <laughs> Ambush Bug. Hilarious, like kind of a parody character. Uh, but yeah, did some Suicide Squad. He, yeah, he just had his hand. He was a DC guy for sure. Uh, but yeah, Emerald Dawn was good. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't realize he he, he had a hand. Yeah, in Yeah, I was just looking at some of the stuff he's done. I'm like, I didn't realize he did that one, dude. I know he did the fucking the Boo Beetle stuff, but. I didn't know he did Emerald Dawn. He did uh, mm-hmm. like another one, like Hal Jordan. Uh, was it Hal Jordan Wanted? No, it wasn't that one. Uh, yeah, the Great Darkness Saga. Uh, he, yeah, a lot of people talk about that one. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You have to. Yeah, Matt, our uh, friend Matty Ice. Uh, he, he he he's a big fan of that book. It's hard. It's hard to. Um... Oh, he did. Uh... Oh, he did Legend of Aquaman. Okay, that was a good. That was a good run. It was a limited. Uh, that was like one of my first books I read when I was a kid. Uh, it was Aquaman. It was like a limited series, a five issue limited series. Uh, it was a, yeah, it was a great, was, that was a great, that was a great run. Oh, uh, yeah, I, forgot, I didn't I didn't realize he did that. Yeah, that's, oh. uh, that's a good book. Uh, so yeah, he, he yeah, kind of uh, underrated, man. Want to make wow. something of it? <laughs> oh, he did, he did a uh, new 52 volume three. I remember that. I, I love that. I, I did like the new 52 uh storyline because I like. Reading about all the other characters that weren't like you know the big major ones and shit, Animal Man. Like he he handled a lot of good fucking characters, man. I'm just looking at all the stuff that he, you know that he's that's a he did He Man book, no shit. He did a Mars Attacks uh, classic volume two. Yeah, nice. man, he's he's a good he's a dope. Uh, he did yeah. he's done a lot of other stuff. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, good artist. Yeah, he's a decent artist too, but yeah, definitely more known for his uh his writing for sure. Uh, but yeah, a lot of comic creators came out this week and kind of talked about him and just like he was he seemed to be loved by a lot of a lot of folks. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm kind of bummed I never got to meet him, but you know it's it sucks uh, losing these guys. So, you know, so that's why you know meet these guys when you can because you never know what's gonna happen. <clears throat> and, yeah, uh, he, he he was what? How old was he? He was in was it eighty. Was he eighty? Uh, he was seventy. So 70. not not too not too, uh, not too old. No, not definitely not. Not too old. So, yeah, uh, I don't know what uh, Hondo. What do you think is uh, his best uh, work? Um. Well, I gotta go with. Yeah, just Justice League, uh, man. This yeah. I just I love this so much. Um, just a totally diff, way different from any comic book I've ever read. You know, just. It had this like silly humor in it, and it wasn't so action based or so dramatic. It was more like just a little, 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 lots of humor and just really cool stuff. He drew, he drew a pretty damn good uh, Doctor Doom right there. Oh, uh, that's Doctor cool! Super Villains oh, United cool. uh, book. Uh, so yeah, he did. Uh, I, yeah, I was looking it up. I was like, oh, he did a few issues in here too. Uh, so yeah, this is this is a good run if you want to see some good. Uh, Dr. Doom and Neymar uh, action right there. Uh, the oh, yeah. yeah, check that out if you can, if you can find it. Um, yeah, so yeah. Uh, Effort, what do you think? Well, what's your favorite uh, work of uh, Giffen? I'll say Justice League. Justice League, yeah. yeah. I, I, think I mean, it's kind of hard not, it's kind of, yeah, you have when you have to do the Justice League, you're doing a whole lot of characters. And uh, he, yeah, his, that's, that's what he did it amazingly, dude. I like that one yeah, punch shit. Yeah, the one punch is. That one punch was it. Uh, yeah. 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 And he gave us Lobo, man. J- Jason Momoa's Lobo. So we get, yeah, that's pretty. Uh... <laughs> the main man. Is it, is uh, it, has, it been, has it been willed into existence? Has it been? Will it be? Yeah, I think, I think that was pretty much like it, it was confirmed by him damn near. Uh, Laura, I still have two. Uh, going back to the video talk, uh, two shells of VHS, of VHS uh, tapes when I worked at a video store. 
Keep them. Keep them. Two bit uh, two bookcases. God damn. Uh, the st- spinal tap uh commentary is still in character. Oh yeah. Oh, that's dope. What's up? Uh what's up, uh, comic book uh, comic bookers. What's up, Renee? Uh Exorcist Believer uh, uh sucks. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna pay for it, but I'll watch it to to form my own opinion. But uh, and then I'm gonna probably jump in with him. I, I, yeah, it's gonna, I have a I have a feeling it's gonna suck. Yeah, uh, Miracle Man. Uh, who's uh, who's a green red superhero on the left? Uh, Mr. That's Miracle? A Mir- Mr. Mr. Red Miracle. Oh, yeah, Mr. Miracle. Yeah. Oh man, Mr. Miracle's awesome. He's a new guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mr. Merkel is what? Uh, from the 70s? Early 70s when he first got introduced? Yeah, uh, Jack Kirby creation. Yeah, Jack Kirby's a little boy. Um, it's his boy. His boy. His boy. It's his boy. It's his boy. All right. Uh, let's see. What, what time are we at? Okay, cool. Uh, all right. So let's, uh, let's jump into our pool list. It's uh, And our pool is pretty much stuff you picked up, stuff you watched, listened to. Uh, something that pissed you off, something that made you happy. <laughs> it's poking your little head out there. Uh, just something you want to talk about uh, uh, this week. Uh, so, yeah, RIP uh, Giffen, and uh, yeah, we'll move on to this. Try to get, try to, kind of a Frank special today. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, uh, let's start with you, Honda. What you got, man? Um, as you know, I was at the, uh, Godzilla celebration at Super 7 yesterday. And I showed up with 10 minutes left and <laughs> until, until they closed. And uh, I didn't expect to, to get anything, but I couldn't resist. So I got some good nostalgia, some really cool stuff. Oh, nice. Vincent from the Black Hole. If you If you've seen the Black Hole... This character is awesome, man. So, such a good character, like a a flying android, a flying robot, just really cool. And I got the the bad guy of that movie, also a flying robot, Maximilian. Mm-hmm. Maximilian, yeah. This is so cool, man. Yeah, black hole. Just great stuff. I I love this nerd stuff. It brings me back to my youth. And uh, Super 7 really knows how to tap into my uh, my childhood and <laughs> my younger days, man. They, they they keep coming out with things. And and I love the design. I love the, the, the look of it. Like, I mean, you know, this just looks so cool. Like the, the whole packaging and everything, you know. Um, I encourage people to see the black hole. It's it's got <laughs> the soundtrack. Sounds naughty. <laughs> Disney's the black hole. Okay. Well, sounds I, even, I, I even, even, sounds even naughtier. <laughs> yeah, I know that sounds even worse, right? It's a yeah, it's, it's a family it's, film. Yeah, it's a family film. I I liked it. I thought it was cool. Um, <laughs> Definitely. Uh, so, so those were my pickups, man. I am um, a very happy guy with those with those kind of purchases. Mm. Uh, Mr. Everett, what you got this week? So, I started playing uh, Spider Man Miles Morales. Uh, I'm yeah, really. Huh? Spider Man Two come out, and that's next week. This week, right? No, that yeah, no, I think it's, it's Friday. I think. Uh, I think it's this week. Yeah, Friday. So I started playing Miles Morales and I fucking really enjoying it. Uh, it feels different enough where it, it is Spider-Man, but if you do, if you do feel like you're playing a different character, uh, it doesn't feel just, you know, it, in some parts it feels copy and pasted, but the character changed enough where it's a, it feels like a different game. I like yeah. the music. I like the music in the background uh, that you can just swing. And I like the the movement of the, of how he swings and how he dives and when he sings up, he almost has like this backward falling motion, kind of like similar to uh, Spider-Man uh, into the Spider-Verse. Uh, I'm, I just started it, but it's, it's really fun. Are you trying and to finish it before uh, part two comes out or? No, no, it's no. just, I started another game cause I got stuck in one game, another game. So it's like, oh, I'm stuck in this level. Let me 
start something new right now because I don't want to get mad. Uh, I'll go back to it eventually. But right now, I'm I'm, I'm liking Spider Man. It's the puzzles are different because you have to you have different powers, so it's 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 pretty cool. Uh, second is <clears throat> on Netflix right now. Ray, it's gonna be a Rick pick right now. I'm not gonna do a hidden gem. It's a Rick pick. Ray, your favorite picture. There it is. Ray loves that photo. I think Rick loves that photo. <laughs> I, I do. I, I could do the same thing. So uh, on Netflix right now, uh, there's a movie called uh, Deliver Us From Evil. Ow, you son of a bitch. Ow, son of a bitch. He's biting me. Ow, son of a bitch. Yeah. You need to be delivered from. Yeah, he's fucking. I have to exercise. From your deliver, kitty cat. Us, deliver us from Eva. Yeah, deliver us from Kenobi. Uh, so uh, go watch uh, Deliver Us From Evil. It's uh, Eric Banner's in it. Uh, Joel McHale. Uh, God, I can't remember that one guy from uh, Prometheus, the first guy who gets infected, who fucks everybody up at the ship. But he's in it too. He plays the bad guy. Uh, I think he was also in Bond. He was. Uh, no, no, he was the guy from Mission Impossible. The the one that they had to fucking you know get. Who was the leader of this this big? He's pretty much Cavill's boss. In uh, in Mission Impossible, uh, but yeah, dude, it's 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 a pretty good movie. I like what, I like what kind of genre? It's horror. Oh, okay. It's horror. It's more. It's like exorcism horror. It has to do a lot with you know, a priest. Uh, there's a priest in it, and and the dude calls it his radar. That's the cool part. Like the, the cop just sees shit, and you know he th- he he thinks of it as like a, like a hunch. That's how it all starts because you know he's a good cop he just thinks of shit like you know he just looks at stuff and he you know has a hunch on shit uh but it, it's a good movie i, I like eric banner in this movie uh just a, such a shame that he was wasted on such a bad fucking hulk movie because i think uh i don't know if he's a good bruce banner but he definitely could have done other comic book roles uh yeah i like him as an actor man i like when he pops up in the next i mean he's I, a think good actor, he's, dude. I think he's six five Really? Yeah. So that's where they he were saying, been. like, he's too big to play Banner. You know? Yeah. Banner was you know, meek. He was like all yoked out and shit too. Like, yeah, yeah. no. Like Banner's supposed to be like meek, and that's the whole point. He turns into yeah. fucking the Hulk. Back like. back in the day, he could have been like a Superman candidate. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. got that square jaw. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, he could have been a Superman. Ca- he could even been a Batman candidate. Like, uh, yeah, he 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 can he can play like tortured, like you know, his little fucking furrowed brow and shit. You know, he's a good actor. And it's always good to see him. And Joel McHale was to see him in that. And he was kind of jokey, but he was, you know, kind of a snarky fucking New York Boston cop. I think because he was wearing a Boston hat. I don't know if he was, they were, he was like, dude, take that off. They're going to beat the shit out of you. And I'm not going to be held responsible. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a good movie. I'm, I'm not, I think it's Derrickson. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I want to double check that. But uh, uh, it's a, it's a good movie. It's on Netflix. Uh, and apparently it's like based on a true story. True uh, story. So, yeah, it's a Scott Derrickson movie. And I, I'm, I'm really a big fan of Scott Derrickson. Him and uh, Mike Flanagan. Oh, and I'm about to have a fucking review on that shit. Uh, I heard a House of Usher came out on Netflix. And I saw that there were a lot of the you know, same, same faces, same characters that Mike Flanagan. And I think it might be a Mike Flanagan production. I, I'm interested in seeing that fucking whole bunch of rich families just getting fucking taken out left and right. You know, inherit inheritances. You know, are being handled. Uh, I just want to see this shit. Just looks like fun. Mm. But that's gonna be my yeah. That's definitely on my my pull list. I can't wait to see that. Yeah. Nice. Uh, let's see, uh, Lori. Uh, I'm going to go see Werner Herzog on the 21st. That guy is fucking. I love hearing that guy fucking talk, man. He's, <laughs> he's just, hey, dude, watch Werner Herzog in uh, the, a movie called uh, The Grand. In The Grand, he's fucking hilarious, dude. Uh, uh, I am also excited to introduce Alex to live in uh, and die in LA. Uh, that's You've a, never seen it? That's a Michael no. J. Fox one, right? No, that's Who's a Tupac that? song. No, nah, um, to live and die in LA. Uh, no, um, uh, thanks, Lori, for uh, for <laughs> scoring the ticket, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I haven't been to the Roxy since I went to go see Flash Gordon. A year ago. Uh, he's a uh, let's see. Uh, I have a couple things. Uh, speaking of the Godzilla thing yesterday, I picked up a little Godzilla, uh, the old school Godzilla, Mega Godzilla, uh, done in the old school mask. 
the what was the guy called the the Cooper something Cooper uh, style man? Remember those shitty plastic masks your parents would buy you instead of an actual costume, <laughs> like the little plastic fucking vest. Dude, like, I love that there's a meme out there of all the kids wearing that shit. It looks yeah. like they're ready for a night on the purge. The purge is for Larry's. Also got this picked up. This uh, big dog right here. At the Godzilla Fest, uh, Dragon Zord, uh, the best Zord, really. Uh, of course, Power Rangers, but uh, pretty much it's Godzilla, but in a robot form. Uh, let's see. Saw a couple concerts this week. Uh, went to go see Everclear at uh, at the August Hall. That was uh, that was fun. Cheesy uh, '90s California uh, surf rock, uh, <laughs> really cool. Uh, Atari, the Atari's opened up for them, and this uh, band called uh, what was it called uh, the Pink the Pink Spiders. Very, uh, very, uh, they, they're the ones that opened up for them. Uh, fun little band, man. Very, very, you know, sound very of the time, uh, of that time. A lot of fun. And also went to go see Peter Gabriel at the Chase Center. Um, never seen Peter Gabriel before. Uh, definitely had some, uh, some hits, some bangers, uh, you know, in, you know, Big Time and Sledgehammer, Salisbury Hill. Shot uh, the had, Monkey. He didn't play Shock the Monkey, man. That's wow. the one he didn't play. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm bummed about that. I, I love that song. Uh, but a fun show, good stage presence, man. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, never seen uh, Peter Gabriel uh, checked off my list. Uh, also, uh, what was the other one? Um, oh, Gen V. Uh, this is the the boys spinoff on uh, Amazon Prime. If you've watched the boys, I highly recommend watch this show. It's pretty much uh, X Men. Uh, it's kind of X Men uh, type. Uh, it's basically all the kids that before they become official superheroes, this is their 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 school their college uh it's fucking brutal it's just as brutal as the boys and more in some ways more <laughs> more so uh the characters are really interesting i love how they kind of play with the superhero dynamics uh it's very much um it's very much uh X, uh, their their version of the x-men uh it, it's it's pretty pretty crazy uh there are five episodes in right now i think it's a 10 episode season uh, but if you like the boys, I highly recommend watching Gen V. Uh, it's really entertaining, really good. Uh, some fun play on the superhero genre uh, and kind of pushing the boundaries of what the boys uh, has, have been doing. Uh, and, yeah, it kind of ties into a lot of stuff, too. So I highly recommend watching Gen V if you haven't already. Uh, check that out. Uh, let's see. Uh, and my last one, I knew it was going to be epic pull list this week. Uh, this is... <coughs> Uh, omnibus of what if uh, into the multiverse? God damn, this is a big That's boy. An omnibus. This is a chunky boy. Uh, there's like forty, I think forty one issues in this in this bubby. Uh, yeah, so a lot of great issues of uh, what if uh, from the early, uh, late eighties, early nineties. Uh, this was pretty much my education into the Marvel universe. Uh, this is where I learned uh, a lot of the storylines that they they paralleled. And that's kind of gave me like a like kind of a clue into some of these storylines, uh, but great great run. Uh, I've been waiting for this one. I think ever since we started talking about omnibuses, this has been number one on my list. I want the first, I want a what if uh, volume two, uh, the second series, uh, eighty I think eighty eight to you know this is from eighty eight to like ninety two. This is like a couple a few years, uh, but it's a big chunky boy. A lot of good stuff in this. Uh, yeah, this is going to be just one book I can just pick it up and read a, a random story and it, you know it's uh, some great ones like what if um wolverine became the lord of vampires what if uh, spider-man kept the alien costume uh what if uh x-men lost inferno uh what if the punisher hadn't been uh, family hadn't been killed uh this is a lot of cool shit in here a lot of good artists too you got rob liefeld in this you got uh mark bagley scott mcdowell this is like where a lot of guys got their start like uh, uh like kind of got their um uh, kind of got their test, like here, draw this issue or draw this. Issue. You know, oh, nice. uh, Jim Valentino is in here. Uh, some great artists got their start. Uh, some um, some uh, writers like Ron Lim, uh, artists like Ron Lim and stuff. So some fun stuff, man. This is a lot. I'm so happy. Thanks to Frank at uh, Amazing Fantasy, get, making sure I got this uh, this one. Uh, but it's definitely one of my uh, one of my favorite omnibuses, just right off the bat. Question. Alex, does that make you jealous? That omnibus right there, you're, you're Doctor Omnibus, bro. You know? He has all the omnibuses. Let me have um, one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm not jealous. 
um, but I, I probably picked that one up myself. <laughs> it's a good that's one, a, man. That's a, a that's a hefty boy, dude. Oh my it's god, that looks like you're trying to conjure shit, kind of a book. I think it's, the, I think it's like I think this one in the Walt Simons and Thor is like the biggest ones I got. I think omnibus. Those are huge, man. That's that's, that's when I hear omnibus. That's an omnibus. <laughs> yeah, that's. that's a, a, that's a chunky like, boy. That's, right that's not a knife. That's a knife. That's an omnibus, bro. That's a chunky Holy boy fuck. right there. Yeah. yeah. 41 issues, man. How, how many pages? I like them thick. <laughs> Thicker than a <laughs> snicker. This is like two, <laughs> like, uh, 1,200 pages? Yeah, yeah, 1,200 pages. Damn. And that's a lot. <laughs> that's a big boy. It's not a book. Uh, but yeah. It's a tome. <laughs> <laughs> the book of Ashanti. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so that's a that's a big boy. Thanks to Frank, uh, Amazing Fantasy. Go check out Frank at the Amazing Fantasy. Buy your, buy all your comic needs. Uh, let's see. Uh, wow, look at look at that book. That's a book right there from Renee. Uh, I I have what ifs. Yeah, the Watchers. Yeah, the Watcher. Uh, yeah, that, it's it, it, there's some really fun storylines in there, man. The the it, it, issue 20, uh, 25, probably my favorite of uh, you know what if uh. Uh, the uh, Marvel Universe lost Atlantis attacks. Some great, uh, yeah. We, we talk about that book all the fucking time. <laughs> does, 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 does that one have the book of uh, what if uh, Scott and uh, Scott and Alex stayed with their dad? Like if the Summers family think, wasn't broken I think, up. I think that's a later one. I think that's okay because that's one, that's one. I love that one, dude. Because I, I just the idea of those brothers not fucking like they do bicker, but they weren't broken up when they were fucking kids. Yeah, uh, I think I think they stay with her. If I remember right, I think they stayed with Corsair. Yeah, like what? What if Wolverine battles Conan? That, what if? Oh. Uh, what if? Uh, Bo, Bo just woke up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's some great shit in here, man. I, I really love this fucking book, man. I can, yeah, I'm, I can't wait to, you know, go Good deep in, on this one. But yeah. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, any uh, uh, any hidden gems today? Anybody got a hidden gem they want to talk about real quick? Just just Kenobi. He bit the shit out of me. Just Kenobi. Hondo, you got a hidden gem for us this week? Um, eh, yeah. I guess I, I can pick something out. I got this uh, Doctor Strange by um, uh, Trad Moore. He mm. had a signing uh, last month at uh, that book is signed. Yeah, <laughs> get this. Oh, nice. ah. You got it. Yeah, son. it's it's really good artwork. It's really you know, really uh. You can't oh, really pretty, tell, but like pretty de- it's pretty detailed. I can see it. Uh not there. No. It's a nice big book, and uh I, I love having all these all these really cool things on my collection. It's just uh you know it's 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 part of the collectors. Um I'm actually thinking like in terms of like how physical media is disappearing, and I know space is an issue. Especially in my case, I don't have a lot of space, but I'm actually embracing that everything is packed, that I have tons of shelves with books and DVDs and, you know, even records and stuff. So it's like, I, I don't care. I'm, it, it may appear cluttered, but Control I like, chaos, having, Control I like having a bunch of stuff. And, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm actually not your happy place, man. I'm not going to, I'm not going to like <coughs> for having too many things. I'm just going to embrace it and say, Hey, it may look a little messy. And I understand the, the, the concept of decluttering and being a minimalist and getting rid of things, but I'm actually going the opposite direction now. Um, you know, and just try to organize my, my, my collection, um, in a nice way. And, uh, you know, long live physical media. There you go. So it is actually today, or yeah, today, the four year anniversary. So yeah, that'd be four oh, years. <laughs> it, it, it makes sense too, because uh, <laughs> the Alex is here, you know, the attorney yeah, champion. When I officially made the announcement. Thanks for uh, having me. Officially oh, made no, I, saw, the, I saw Friday the 13th yesterday, the original. No, you only, you, know, you had your chance, man. You had your Sorry. chance. <laughs> but I just want to talk about Kevin Bacon, dude. Kevin Bacon. I had I forgot that Kevin Bacon is in one of the best kills in the franchise. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think that's, that, that, that's Tom Savini too, right? He he came up with that one. Yeah. He, he yeah, the legend. Uh, all right, let's get out of here. Got to fucking work. Okay. 
Can't wait for that. Uh, Hondo, any final words? Oh, you had like 20 final words. Uh, but you can have one more. I'm going to see They Live and The Thing tonight. Nice. And so yeah, I'm excited, uh, man. Big Leo, definitely buying Blu-rays on Black Friday, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Have a great weekend, gents. Happy anniversary to the channel, yeah? Yeah, yeah. fucking four-year. Child is the thing. What? Child is the thing. Oh. In that scene, go back and watch it. Child is the thing. There's there's a little there's little things they they chuckle. <laughs> remember they're 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 supposed to keep their food together. Watch just remember this, Alex. They're supposed to keep their stuff. They're not supposed to mix it with other people, right? And when fucking you know McCready takes a a drink, he then offers Charles the bottle. Charles takes the bottle and then he drinks. That's when McCready laughs. It's like it's like ah he he wouldn't take it if he was you know. If they're gonna to try to survive it out, I think I think he was the thing. Tell me, I, I've heard that theory before. Yeah, yeah watch, I've watch it. it. Uh, Renee Legion of Superheroes, uh, another key, uh, Keith Giffen classic. Uh, yeah. uh, Rick Rockstar, later, y'all. Peace later, out, Ricky Rockstar. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, yeah, happy anniversary, five years. Thanks, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll do something big for the fifth year anniversary. It's uh, four years, not really. You know, just we're still here apparently. So, uh, fucking do the show back together, fucking you know. Yeah, well, we, well, we got to do that for two hundred. Uh, we got to, you know, we got to do the live. We did that for hundred. Center. Yeah, we'll do the live uh, in 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 house uh, episode, which is a pain in the ass. <laughs> I was like, well, man, we had to do that. Shit. Put up the lights and everything. Oh man, Rick had to move a mouse. It was fucking. It was a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work. Oh, but I, we're happy to do it. Yeah, Ow, right. you motherfucker! <laughs> Son of a bitch! He bit. He bit me. Get him, Kenobi. He bit me. He bit me. Fucking asshole! He's so, he's so happy to look at him. Look at that face! Wow, he's big. Look at that face, Kenobi. I remember when he was a, was a little guy. So I'm a Rick or the cat. <laughs> <laughs> Kenobi. All right. No, I remember Rick when he, ah, you see, when he you was see, a big guy. Get him, get him, Kenobi. Get him. Get him. Good boy. Rick lost some weight, man. He was like that omnibus before. <laughs> Ricky bus. Wow. Thanks a lot, Alex. <laughs> right on, Hondo. <laughs> yeah, yeah and I, I need to follow. I need hey, to... tell him, tell him you do dieting the way to go. Bro. I, yeah, I know. You got your right, the thing is, don't think about it dieting. Good, right, good habits. Good habits. Yeah, guys, let's fucking talk all right, homies. Good, all good times. Thanks for you're, you're having me. Why, 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 <laughs> no, I don't know why how to take out There you go. All right. Uh, we're going to get out of here. Uh, you guys have a good weekend. Be safe. Uh, we're going to have a bunch of stuff, uh, stuff to talk about. Halloween coming up. So we'll definitely talk some horror movies uh, mm. soon. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you, but keep on like to subscribe, all that crap. If you haven't already, uh, like the video thumbs up. If you've made it this far, uh, yeah, go buy comics, go buy DVDs, go buy Blu-rays, uh, keep physical media alive as long as you can. Uh, cause it's, it's a dying, it's a dying breed. Uh, so we're going to get out of here. Be safe, everyone. Peace. Happy, uh, Saturday the 14th. Oh, why'd you say that? Uh, something.